Hi again everyone and welcome to the latest installment of the vlog. Today I will be diving into my recent discovery of a relatively new social media platform called OnlyFans and why I think we should be avoiding it. Please give this video a like and sit back and enjoy. So there I was sitting at home looking through YouTube sort of thinking I need to come up with a new idea for a video. Uh, and I started coming across a few videos about a social media platform that I had heard mentioned a few times before, but I didn't really know much about that platform being OnlyFans. Uh, my curiosity led me down a bit of a rabbit hole to see what it was all about. And that's where I got the eureka moment from about making this video. Um, just to add a little bit of context to this video, when I switched on my Spotify and started planning out what I was going to say in this video, um, it played the song Know Your Enemy by Rage Against the Machine. So if I come across as slightly fired up, you know where it's coming from. Anyway, as a way of an explanation, OnlyFans is a social media platform owned by Twitter where users pay a fee to subscribe to content from people they truly like to follow. Um, what this promotes is another revenue stream that the content producers can tap into by making more exclusive content that they hold back from posting on the free to use social media services such as YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Now at this stage, I'm not even angry at OnlyFans as a platform. I think there is some validity to the idea of paying for content in some areas. For example, I think if someone is producing a course of study of a high quality, it is acceptable to pay for it. Or if it was someone who produced really high quality content that was useful or entertaining, um, yes, that's definitely worth paying for. Where I had my initial problem is the type of personalities that I came across who are encouraging people to subscribe to them on OnlyFans. Um, when researching further, the main demographic that I came across uh, who were promoting these accounts, I guess you could categorize as being either small-time YouTubers or Instagrammers. Um, the prices which they were asking for ranged from $5 to $50 a month to subscribe. So for that price, you would be hoping to get something either entertaining or at least useful because you can Netflix and chill for $10 a month. Anyway, based on what you see on the homepage of OnlyFans, the type of content that you are going to get um, it seems to be photos of people having a coffee at home in activewear or a video on how to load weights properly onto a barbell and opinions on topics that the people are uh, perhaps not even qualified to, to talk about. Um, basically the same stuff that I enjoy for free and from more prominent personalities on social media already. Yet the site claims to have paid out over a quarter of a billion dollars to date, which I couldn't believe. Like, Who's paying for this? What are they paying for? So at this stage, I thought perhaps there are some more reputable people worth following on this platform. So I did a search for famous people who have OnlyFans profiles and I found an article by Insider published about two weeks ago, which I know is like a decade in terms of internet years. Uh, but anyway, it detailed five celebrities who have started a presence on the platform. Those being Black China, Real Housewife of New York, Dorinda Medley, um, rappers The Dream and Casanova and hip-hop couple Safari and Eric Minna. Now I'm aware that I live under a huge impenetrable rock when it comes to the latest celebrity gossip and personalities that are supposed to be famous. Um, the only famous people I know a lot about and would potentially consider stalking for an autograph or a selfie are the members of ACDC who are so old they probably still have a dial-up internet connection. Uh, but I have no idea who these people are that the article is mentioning. So straight away, it makes me think um, it's definitely not your A-level personalities who you are paying to follow on OnlyFans. This article, besides introducing me to a group of people who obviously have no respect for their parents' choice names, shed some light on what OnlyFans is actually all about, uh, much more so than the platform explains on its homepage anyway. Um, and after reading this article by Insider, it all made sense. Um, OnlyFans is basically a porn subscription service. At this point, I should probably point out that even if any of the members of ACDC started an OnlyFans account, I would not be subscribing to it. Um, and after pondering my naivety for a while, it made me think how bad OnlyFans potentially is. Um, so brace yourself because this is the part where my rant really takes off. Social media has increasingly changed the way humans interact, providing many valuable and useful revolutions and solutions, many of which we have clearly seen in the recent COVID-19 context that we have been living through. You know, things such as video conferencing rather than flying across the world to meet a client, providing a virtual classroom when school shut down, and being a conduit for reconnecting and staying connected with friends and family despite physical distance. 
On top of all this, it has created a new type of style of celebrity and given a voice to others who would often not have had a platform to express it on. Um, it has made celebrity status something that seems much more in grasp of the common person. And you know, these things you could say are good. However, there are darker sides of social media, which I have seen the negative impacts of firsthand as a high school teacher for almost 10 years. Um, social media helps facilitate a covert and vicious form of non-physical bullying, and perhaps more relevant to the point I'm trying to make, social media seems to encourage shallow attention getting behavior. Now, I want to say that this does not apply to everyone, uh, but there is certainly an increasing element of youngsters out there who will degrade themselves to an increasingly lower level at the chance of getting a dopamine hit from uh, people liking their latest post and the potential idea of moving one step closer um, in life to being sustainably compensated for what they post on social media. Um, I for one feel this is not healthy and if we as a society allow an app like OnlyFans to become normalized, we are fueling the degrading of young people and our society's morals at large. By normalizing the use of a platform such as OnlyFans, what message are we sending to young people out there? Uh, this is a generation who look to social media to inform many of their values and opinions in life already. Um, as a society, we need to draw the line somewhere, and I think this isn't a bad point to start at. Anyway, to finish with on a lighter note, I will treat you to a sneak peek of what you could have expected in terms of exclusive content from me um, had OnlyFans and me been a better match. First of all, you're going to get it for free. Um, however, you can show your support for me by subscribing and hitting the like button on this YouTube page. Um, I would love to hear what you guys think about the OnlyFans platform in the comments below. Uh, so until next time, take care of yourselves and enjoy this free taste of what could have been a sample of the content you could have been paying for on OnlyFans had Sean's vlog branched out onto the platform. Take care. Bye.